Well, at the Huntington here at home, something big and stinky is about to happen. <laughs> We're talking about the famed corpse flower known oh, for its towering height and notoriously foul odor. It's getting ready to bloom. This is a live look over the rare plant, which is drawing big crowds eager to witness and smell one of nature's most dramatic and short-lived flowers. I don't really get this, but... <laughs> it's, it's the fascination for the weird, you I guess know? it is, the, the oddity of it. Brandon Tam is the associate curator of the Orchid Collection at the Huntington Library, Art Museum, and Botanical Gardens. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Okay, so help me understand. <laughs> Tell me about this corpse flower and why are people so fascinated exactly. with it being smelly? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, really, there are three main reasons people find the corpse flower so fascinating. First, it blooms very rarely, typically once every four to six years. Mm. Uh, second, when it does bloom, the flower only stays open for less than 24 hours, making it a fleeting event. You have to catch it just at the right moment. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, the probably most famous reason, it's powerful odor. Mm -hmm. The pungent smell, while unpleasant to us, is designed to attract the flower's natural pollinators, of course. Oh. Um, and this also attracts a lot of big crowds as well. Uh -huh. What are their natural pollinators? Yeah, so there's carrion beetles, flesh flies. These are insects that love that scent. Uh, Ew. Because typically they, they, I know, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But to us, we're also fascinated by the smell because that's something that we usually don't associate with a flower because we usually think of roses, things that smell good. Right. Flesh flies. Yikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I guess we need them. <laughs> Part exactly. of nature? I don't know. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Um, okay, so Brandon, um, the name may give us a clue, the corpse flower, but most people don't know what this smells yeah. like. For folks who don't know, how would you describe the smell? Yes, no, absolutely. And I, I love the imagination from the, from the public. Um, <laughs> but researchers have actually analyzed the scent and found out that the compounds are made up of uh, dimethyl disulfide, dimethyl trisulfide. And these are the chemicals that smell like decaying organic matter. Oh. But when we do have visitors that come to describe the scent, they often compare that to that of uh, rotten eggs, sweaty ah. gym socks or even dead animals in the attic. Um, everyone's <laughs> nose is, is a little different, uh, but no one really forgets the smell once you have smelled it. I mean, my gym socks smell bad, but I don't think they all smell that bad. Um, we, we know the bloom is unpredictable, but does temperature impact the flower? Are there things you can look for yeah. to see when it's actually gonna bloom? Yeah, absolutely. Like all plants, the cork flower really responds to its environment. Uh, this past week in Los Angeles, it's actually been a little cooler right. uh, than our usual summer weather, uh, which has actually slowed down the growth oh. and made predicting the exact bloom uh -huh. a little bit more difficult. Uh, usually botanists can give a good estimate of when it opens, but usually the, the unusual weather patterns that we may get from time to time uh, makes it a lot trickier. Uh, so unfortunately, it's harder for us to predict this year. It doesn't affect the plant at all in terms of health, but mm -hmm. it does slow down the growth um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. All right. The timing has to be good. Now, Brandon, this isn't the first corpse flower that's bloomed at the Huntington, obviously. Back in 2018, three bloomed at the same time, which I can imagine was very stinky, and they were named Stink, Stank, and Stunk. <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. Now, this year, the flower was given a name as well, and it's a nod to one of the most famous paintings at the library. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great uh, point there. So this is actually our 28th court flower bloom here at the Huntington since 1999. Our very first bloom was in 19, uh, 1999. It was actually quite historic. Uh, it was the first recorded bloom in California and the 11th uh, in the entire United States. Uh, back then, very few botanic gardens had these plants, mm. so we made a mission to conserve and share them. Uh, one of our core responsibilities as a botanical garden is to share plants propagating and distributing <laughs> rare species to help ensure that they aren't lost. Uh, and this makes them more accessible to other gardens and of course reduces the pressure on wild populations by discouraging illegal poaching in the wild. Mm. So this has been a great opportunity where we have multiple blooms, uh, but this one in particular, Green Boy, um, is quite the, uh, green, quite, green the, 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 quite the sight. Well, I have to say, I, the pictures are beautiful, so I'll just keep looking at those. <laughs> I'll let other people maybe enjoy the smell, but thank you so much for being with us this morning. Yeah, no worries. Thank you.